Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. Houston is hot. Of course, we have air conditioning here, but uh, air conditioning is not just a luxury these days, it's a necessity. And HCC has a strong program to train folks to maintain and operate and install those AC units. Our HVAC program is what it's called. And Roger Miller joins me, HCC faculty, HVAC and automated controls program. Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. Um, we were talking, or, talking earlier before the show started about dealing with AC units in the attics. Tell me, first off, a person has to not only learn how to install and maintain this equipment, but you're saying they need to condition their body for a few years before you can deal with that. Why is that? Yes, your, your body is going to have to become used to the heat and the cramped up spaces. Uh, attics in Houston, July, August, is very, very common to be from 140 all the way up to 180 degrees in the attics. Like I say, so you're, you're sweating it out quicker than you can actually intake it. Like, and, how, and you say it takes a couple of years to get used to that because you're working in an oven more or less. Yes, absolutely. And how do you tr tell when people are getting into this, they think they're just going to be outside fixing air conditions. How do, you, how do you tell them about this and get them to say, hey, this is a serious thing you're going to be dealing with? Oh, it's, it's very serious. I tell the students on orientation, if you think air conditioning is a cool job, you're in the wrong spot. Place. Right. Because, I mean, the only air conditioned time you're going to have as a technician is in the truck riding from one job to the next. And then getting there and you're going to be outside or up in the attic. That's for it. The rest Absolutely. Of the Roof, rooftops or outside. But right. you're, you're in a profession where you're pretty much guaranteed a job. If you're good at your job and you get the right certifications, you, you're going to have work all the time here in Houston. Yes. Houston is the most air conditioned city in the world due to the heat. And the in the world. In the world. Wow. In the world. Um, do you have, let's took us go back and talk about the program. We want to talk about the, you can get certifications in this. Are there levels of certifications or are there two year degree? Is there more? What is offered? All of it. Okay. You can simply come in for a degree. We have a basic certificate, a level one certificate, an advanced certificate. And then if you want to further that, you can go all the way up into, you know, associate, associate of applied science. I'm sorry. And you say so you could go on and move to, uh, and if you want, could you move to another uh, four-year college as well? I, they're, they're not offering bachelors right now in air conditioning. Uh, there are bachelors in, you know, building trades, things of this nature, right. and, you know, but not in air conditioning specifically. But you could go into building trades and have a specific or specialty in air yes, conditioning. Yes, absolutely, yes. Do you find a lot of your students are looking to go work for someone, start their own businesses? How does that work? They normally, we prepare the students at entry level, uh, and that starts them off at forty to $60,000 a year. And after doing this for a couple of years, a lot of them do want to go into business for themselves. Right. Okay. And that, that time frame works very well for them. They'll see multiple installations where, you know, zoning systems, staging systems, mini splits, central system, package systems, all of these are different types of systems that are used in the field. So it gives them a very wide variety of, of the applications. When you go in business for yourself, everybody thinks there's a lot of money involved with that. Or are you going to, is your income going to double, triple? How does that work? What do you tell students? You know, you mentioned you want to go out, get your, get your feet wet and work on your skills and trades for a couple of years working for somebody. Yes. But working for yourself, what's that going to benefit you besides maybe earn some more money? Most students have the concept of thinking they're going to be their own boss. Right. Okay. <clears throat> You're never your own boss in this field. Someone is paying the bill at the end of the job, so that is the boss of that job. Okay, being your own company owner, you can select the jobs that you want, and you do have that freedom. But you're never your own boss because you're looking to get paid from someone, so that person will always be the boss. Uh, it does open up more freedom, like I say. So there's definite, you know, positives there. Uh, but like I say, it's just wide open for about 10 months out of the year you're running wide open here in Houston doing air conditioning. So the first level of certification um, how long does that take and can they go out and work immediately after that? Our first level of certification is our basic level uh, we offer this in two different time frames an eight-week semester mm -hmm. and a 16-week semester depending on the students needs okay after the first semester you can get hired on with an air conditioning company because that will get you your EPA certification and your basic electricity out of the way. This is the, what the, the employer has to have 
from you entering you know, their, their job site. So that basic certification around eight weeks, they can go find employment. Do you help them find employment? There is a division here at Houston Community College that does assist in that. Uh, normally, that's not a problem right. being Houston to get a job doing air conditioning. If you can say air conditioning, someone will hire you to do it, but it's your skills and, you know, and your ability that's going to allow you to keep that job. Now, are these certifications stackable so that they Absolutely. can get one after the other, and then if they want to keep going, go into the uh, uh, applied arts uh, or applied science? Applied degree? science. Yes, sir. All, all of our certificates are stackable all the way through. And how many, you said there's two levels of certification, then the um, degree that you could get? Well, well, there's actually three levels. You have okay. the basic level, you have level one certificate, and the advanced level certificate. Then, like I say, then you can carry that into a degree. So actually, you could break this into four parts. Do you find a lot of folks coming back to HCC who have maybe been working in the field for several years and they just want to uh, brush up on their knowledge or get an extra certification to increase their earnings? I have about four students now that are returning students that got away from it and went back into this in the field and come back in just as you're saying as a refresher. The, the, the field is constantly changing. Years ago we didn't have the mini splits and now the mini splits are like taking over and like I say students are coming back in to get that information. So one thing, you talk about the field changing and with technology, nowadays um, a lot of folks want to walk in their home and say, uh, you know, Alexa, turn on the air conditioning, you know, um, or and then adjust everything on a digital thermometer as opposed to the older ones. Right. How has that technology changed the way you operate and the way you install these systems? The installation, it really hasn't changed. The, what has changed is the communication between the equipment. Okay, as far as the equipment, it's, you're still just taking heat from one location, releasing it where it makes little or no difference. That's, that, that cannot change. That's the principles of air conditioning. But actually, the technology of how to control it, that has changed, both in residential and in light commercial and heavy commercial. So we're phasing into building automation, taking care of, like I say, chill water applications, uh, commonly used in hospitals, your high rises here at Houston Community mm -hmm. College. It's all chill water applications, and like I said, we're branching more into that. So you're having to adjust the way uh, you're teaching and learning. Um, the basics are still the same, but all the automation from what you're saying is changing, right. and you're having to teach people to learn those as well. Correct. Do you find yourself when you get out to a job site, if you're, if you're having to install a digital piece of equipment, do you... Are your guys trained to do all of that in one, or do you need to rely on other contractors to come out and assist with what you're doing? No, we, we're able to do that. As students, when they leave our program, they're fully capable of going in and installing Nest thermostats or just other forms of digital. Nest is not the only one out there. A lot of people like the Nest, mm -hmm. but there, you know, there's a lot of different avenues. But yes, Absolutely. they are fully functional. Absolutely, and as technology is changing, we're all expecting to get things done. And I know when it's hot and your air conditioning breaks, you guys are the uh, the hero in the situation. Or if you can't make it on time, you're, then you're the villain. You right. have to deal with that. Roger Miller from HCC's HVAC department. Thanks for being here on the topic. Okay. We're going to return after this. Stay with us on the topic on HCC TV. We have academic programs that help students get from high school into a university. And the data is very clear that students that take the path of a community college finish in far higher numbers than students that start straight into a university experience. 
our students can achieve a baccalaureate degree in multiple fields from the universities in the area without ever leaving Houston Community College. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. We are podcasting to you from Houston Community College HCC TV Studios. And we're joined today by Walter Adams from HC, HCC's faculty in the Industrial Electricity and Automation Department. Thanks for being here oh, on The Topic. you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, earlier we were talking with someone from the HVAC department, mm -hmm. and we talked about how nowadays everybody wants to walk in their house and simply tell your smart <laughs> device what to turn your temperature on, turn the TV on. I mean, I know I do. I I want to hear mm -hmm. so the radio in the background I do that um, in in a basic way is that part of what your department is teaching students to do is to install these systems well right now um, of course thanks to the younger generation and, and as our field has matured over the last 140 years because we're relatively a new trade right um, pretty much you can't live without electricity yeah so at some point even here you're ruled by having electricity run lights, cameras, uh, run your chargers for smartphones, uh, even now electrical vehicles, uh, solar. So, so pretty much at this point, at some point, there's electricity involved somewhere. So it's the heart of everything. So your students are trained to be electricians. Is that the first uh, trade that um, they're learning? The main one we're focused on, at the, like we have three different uh, sectors basically, but yes, the main one uh, with our associate degree is our electrician type uh, field. Um, we represent roughly about six or seven of the different type of electrical workers though in okay. our program. I know that um, HCC works with programs like the TRIO program, mm -hmm. um, which we uh, have high school students who are mm -hmm. trained to get out there. Um, in order to get out there and working in this field, um, I would imagine you have to go through a lot of uh, training um, besides getting your certifications, but mm -hmm. work out in the field as an apprentice. Is that the case? And do you guys help these guys do that? Well, there, there's a couple of schools of thought on how to get there. Um, apprenticeship is definitely one way to get there, and that's a good model. It's, it's, it's an age-old model that's proved to be effective. Um, uh, we, we are trying to work on getting some of those types of things started in our program, but mainly what we're focused on is, is a higher level of knowledge, and that's where the future of electricity is going is to where your base electrician, what they were learned 20 years ago, isn't good enough anymore. Um, so, so really we're trying to, to train technicians to be more versatile on how to look at some of the new technology that are coming around. What are some of those new technologies that you're, you're um, training for right now? Well, we haven't incorporated this yet, but this just came out in July. Um, your old circuit breaker, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, it, trips a, 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 it trips the breaker, you go back, you flip it right. over. Um, you want a different type of uh, size, whether it's small or large. You actually have to go to the store, buy one, change it out. Now they actually have solid state breakers. You can just do it from your smartphone. If it trips, it will let you know what trip, how it tripped. So the, the, the ability for new techs that are coming out and making it smarter and easier for technicians to do their job, the problem is you've got to train to a higher level to understand how to, how to do these things. Do you, now automation is also in the title. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what that entails. Are we talking the robotic devices inside your house well, or what does that entail? When you break down automation, you have to look at several different categories, just like electrical workers. It's not simple to say you're just an electrician because electrician, there's 10 different fields, 11 different fields. Automation, there's multiple different fields too. Robotics is an offshoot of automation. Um, what we're mainly training our students to do is um, basically like a Budweiser plant and how their conveyor belt uh, goes or Coca-Cola or even process controls into like the oil industry, um, packaging, food, and, and more of that type of automation. You mentioned several industries in the short part of this interview here. Um, it sounds like the field is wide open. What mm -hmm. type of career paths do you um, suggest to your students and point them on? Um, the age-old aspect of electrician is great, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon, but 
in the age we're in now, which is the eight, going into the age of electric, electrification with batteries. So as we start seeing more and more battery technology come, come around and we get EV vehicles, electric vehicles, uh, solar is finally starting to come in its own where it's actually solar is, is a rival price for natural gas and nuclear as far as a source of home generation of electricity. Um, so I, I tell them, it's okay to go work for somebody and just look at what you have done, but don't be scared to exercise your skills to look at offshoots and, and maybe eventually as they work their way up, let's say electrician, to a journeyman and to a master, once they become a master, start their own companies. Right. You know, when you mentioned um, uh, the, the electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think of is, is the advent of Tesla. You're seeing mm -hmm. more of those around, mm -hmm. but you have to install something in somebody's house. Mm -hmm. Do you see that being a boutique industry or something that you're going to be training people for in the future? We are already talking about both the electric vehicle with our automation uh, uh, program here at HEC to start getting that going on. Plus, we're also looking at uh, EV chargers, electric vehicle chargers, to look at those types of things. But a lot of it depends on as that matures more, what that's going to change into. Just like your cell phone where you have to plug it up, you right. now have pad charging, which is yeah. wireless charging. Well, that's a doable deal that at what point is that going to come to cars? Yeah. I and mean, so, how far so are we away from that? Maybe five years. Right. And so, so with all of that, it's where do you get on the niche markets and where, where is the, 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 the really the, the living part of it, the, the middle ground? So. Well, we're going more down the car road because this is fascinating. Where, yeah. where does the um, electricity start messing or meshing with um, the folks who are designing the vehicles? And when do your electricians also have to start taking courses on repairing automobiles because you got them running on electricity? Mm. Do you see that happening? Oh, it's soon? it's it's there. It's the needs already here. In fact, I watch a guy's YouTube video and he wanted to see if he could take two Teslas and put them together and make it work. And so you're starting to see people want to mess with these things the problem is it's not your traditional engine it's not your right. traditional transmission so a lot of the futurist type things that are in electricity right now are not the things that they've used to been so you have to learn like tons of new skills that sometimes aren't even there kind of like our automation one of the right. things we're i'm trying to get pushed through now is um you've, you've gone to your home depot you've gone to your mcdonald's you've gone to your Kroger's, and they're self-checkouts well somebody has to fix that yeah, and so yeah. one of the things we're trying to do is figure out how can we bring that into our program to look at fixing those types of things because at some point they're going to break. Yeah, and, and, and you're seeing them pop up everywhere. Oh, they are. You know, they're, they're all over the place. It's kind of like back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s when everybody was going around selling debit machines, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Mm -hmm. That was a catering industry because oh, yeah. somebody needed to put those in every, every mm -hmm. uh, store and every, every restaurant at that time. Oh, yeah. Well, and the, and, the, and the difficult we have in the electrical trades right now is the average age is 55 years old. And so we're trying to appeal to a younger demographic to get that demographic to come in here and saying, hey, you don't have to go to universities to do this stuff. Right. Uh, I've got journeymen that, that honestly can make 100000 a year, which is, a, which is four years after graduation. I mean, there's no reason you can't. As a master, the sky's the limits once you can own your own company. But then even looking at the self-checkouts, you don't even have to have a license for that. You just have to be good at fixing electronic equipment. Walter Adams, incredible, incredible program you guys have here. Thank you. And thanks for, uh, thanks for being here on the topic and letting us know more about it. For more information on this program, you can log on to hccs.edu slash industrial electricity. I'm Todd Duplantis. I'll see you next time on the topic.